All right, guys, so last night um, we started our install of the second gen kit um, from Source. We had a couple issues. Bracket for this did not work. Um, I think what it is, I think the bracket is designed to use the factory bolts and spacer, which we didn't. We got this kit of uh, bolts and studs from Pure Diesel Power. They are nice. In doing that, we also had trying to stretch it, me being frustrated and just keep going. This, this, well, it was actually here. This stud and nut picked up. Uh, that's something that happens with stainless, but I chose not to use any C's because I didn't want them to rattle off. So that's a, the gamble you take. I just moved that down below. I put a lock washer from the bolt kit, the Allen head cap screw bolt kit behind it and tighten everything up. So that's where we're at. Our exhaust manifolds installed. So the last little piece of uh, stuff we have to do is right there, that hole. That's our, uh, that just goes down into the oil pan. That is the turbo oil drain line. So that's this right here. So what we'll do is we'll shove that in. We'll put a little petroleum jelly on the O-rings here. Um, you just want to make sure when you push it in you get them both to seat and then after uh, after we get this in be ready to take a look at this bad boy the exhaust manifolds in all the little uh, gingerbread as I called all the little dumb shits done so now it's time for the cool stuff So the moment you've all been waiting for. Here she is. Here's our turbo. Oh, she's a beauty. So this is a Borg Warner turbo. This is not a box turbo. This is from Forced Inductions. And this is an S476-8790 to T4 with a V-band and a 360-degree thrust washer. So, what does that mean? What, what, what's a S476-8790? Do you know? Well, anyway, I'm really, I'm not a turbo expert at all. But this is my basic knowledge. So the 476 is, at, first off, it's an S400 frame. It's T4. And the 76 is the compressor size. The 87 is the exhaust wheel. Typically, you'll see an 87 or an 83 exhaust wheel on a single charger for a 67, whether it be on an S467, like the gray truck, that is an S467 8390. The 83 is because it was good in stock fuel and have room to grow. The 70 or the 87. Um, it's a little better with aftermarket fuel and then the 90 housing you're keeping a tighter exhaust housing to help try and drive that wheel so I know it's confusing maybe we'll come back to that at a later date with a little bit better definitions but I just want to get this thing in so I'm going to take it apart real quick for you and show you what all what all it is Here's our compressor cover. Like I said, this goes right over your compressor wheel. So, just a cast piece. Got our V-band for our output, which this little guy right here will go on there with a clamp. And that'll give us our 90 degree bend so we don't have to worry about blowing the boot. Now, something I like to do to all these parts is I kind of port them as best I can. As you can see, you can only get in there so far in this compressor cover. On this 90, I got it nice and good. The uh, It's very smooth. Uh, the inside of it, this is just a cast piece. It was exactly like the outside, kind of porous. And I guess my thinking is it should promote airflow and all that. They don't do this, like Borg Warner doesn't do this because they're mass produced pieces and you know they're not going to take the time to do something like this i mean that's my opinion i just take a like a flapper wheel on an air air die grinder 
and run through there and it's aluminum so it's it's pretty quick so anyway here's our exhaust housing all right here's where our downpipe are bolt up our t4 flange oh we got a little helicopter action or something yeah i don't know if you guys see that little helicopter screwing this all up anyhow so this is our exhaust housing our flange as you can see i kind of took a little dremel or i can't even remember what i used honestly because i did this a while back but i tried to pour it in there a little bit once again promote flow and here is the center cartridge this is our exhaust wheel our 87 exhaust wheel and this is our compressor impeller so if it works as good as it looks we'll be good um jose down at force inductions i got this from him when i called him up told him kind of what i was looking for because i originally actually got this from the gray truck before i decided to build the white truck i asked him i said look i know this is stupid i know it's silly but he said how's the noise i love the noise i'm all about the noise so how is it he says oh this charger will be a screamer so uh Hopefully it lives up to my expectations of being loud. Anyhow, so you have two ports on here. This is your oil drain. Yeah, as you can see, it's got two bolt holes like on our uh, drain line. And this is your oil feed, which we have an adapter for because with the source kit, we will be using our stock line. So, with these uh, S400 chargers, as you saw, it comes apart pretty easy. And that's nice because we can mount our exhaust housing in there. Because we know how it's going to go. We'll mount that. We can slide this in. We can slide this on. I know my truck, that's not a big issue. Because I have the fender well up. I have the battery. But if you don't, you're going to want to take it apart and do this. It just You slide it in. It just makes things a lot easier. And... Your compressor cover may be tight on the fourth gen getting it in there but you just got to wiggle it about and move some shit around and you can get it in there and i mean on mine i actually cut out part of the battery box like a little overhang just to make it easier to get in and out because i was i had pulled it off a couple times just to you know inspect it and things like that so anyway uh i've run my mouth too much we need to get this thing in This job of putting this turbo in has become such a pain in the ass and it's something that's so simple to do. Part of that's probably because I'm mixing matching sh shit a little bit. I was just going to use these studs that were on here, but as you guys could see it was hitting the compressor or the, it was hitting the exhaust housing. So what I'm going to do is do what I did on the gray truck. I will put this stud these two studs in there this is one install that is not going as planned Exhaust housing installed onto the cartridge. Something that Borg Warner even makes sure to put a note in 
uh, in their instructions. Not that there's any instructions with the turbo. This is just a warning they provide. Um, they want you to make sure you oil the bearing so that way the, the thing's not running dry. So what I like to do is I like to put enough in that I actually get some out of the drain on the other side. So I put a, a cap from an old uh, like Lucas oil bottle or whatever on top of this oil court. It doesn't provide the best seal, but for what we're doing, it'll work. We'll just pour it in there, spin it a little, and until we get something out the other side. So as you can see, it's starting to get some oil through the inside. It's not just going to pour through, but uh, you'll, you'll, you'll slowly get some in there. Um, you can probably just fill it and spin it a few times and fill it but i like to just make sure that that it's getting through there i mean just another little thing that makes me sleep better at night so uh i'll put this in and then we'll put our adapter in and then it'll be compressor cover time Right, guys so i still have the uh center section here loose um i could probably actually clamp that down if i wanted to and maybe i should have waited to put the oil line now that i think about it because our next thing is to put the drain on as you can see it sticks up way high um it's nice and long this one that source gives us so we'll just have to bend it to suit our needs um it retains the factory bolts and has a gasket so uh that'll be the next step so guys, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I got our factory bolts for a factory turbo. God damn it. It fit in here. Nice. You know, like they're supposed to, which is what I used on the gray truck. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this oil line and rotate the housing and see what's going on. All right guys, so I looked at my 12 and it turns out that that charger does use, you can use, or I did use, I should say, the factory bolts, which if you can see, just slide right in there. So they're way too small. So my guess is this is something that forced inductions does. Um, I don't know if, what the reason is behind that, to be honest with you, but we persevered and it turns out that those bolts are the same size as, where did I put it? The bolts that I had originally purchased for the manifold before I decided to go with studs. So they were actually too long. They bottomed out in the hole before I would get any crush on the gasket. So I actually cut a quarter inch, I think, something like that off. And then, uh, you know, ground a little lead on them. Not much, just a little. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then ran a, a chaser. So, since this is loose, I will spin it around. And uh, we'll hook our manifold up, or our drain up to our cartridge. Hook our oil line back up. And, uh, yeah, go from there. With these bolts, the gasket actually had kind of were made for the smaller ones but i just ran these bolts in through it rather than just drilling out the gasket so now the gasket's actually providing a holder for our bolts so we don't drop them which is uh man it's pretty convenient all right guys so uh as you can see our oil drain is installed kind of um so i think my camera fell while i was doing that anyway um i guess getting pissed off what i just talked about well uh the 
bolts were holding me up. I couldn't I couldn't get them started. So I kind of got pissed off beat when uh, I accidentally pulled the drain out of the block. So I uh, decided to install the bolts. I'm going to pull this um, cartridge or center section out, put it back in, and then I'll put the drain in. Maybe this is an easier way to do it to begin with. I never thought about it before, but uh, yeah, it seems like this might be a better route to go. So uh, that's where we're at. And this, I'll tell you what. Uh, Our drain's in, as you can see. I kinda got a nice bend to it that, you know, nice radius, radiuses. No, nothing's too sharp, so everything should flow nice. just a pretty sight yeah she looks good in there so uh, I left the compressor housing here loose so that way we can adjust everything because we're gonna want our intercooler pipe to be as straight as possible <laughs> um, I was test fitting our intercooler pipe and I got it where I wanted it. And as you can see, how I wanted it was, you know, pretty even over here. You, you just want to kind of want straight lines. You know what I mean? You don't want something shooting off at a, you know, uh, weird angle or something. So when I get it in the straight line, as you can see, it's pretty much inside the intercooler just about. And it's against this outlet for the turbo. And boggling my mind there for a second, and then I realized, you know, we have an aftermarket intercooler. Not thinking, this kit is designed for putting a second gen swap in a stock truck. Well, stock, stock, what it's based off of. So, what I think needs to happen, and no. So what needs to happen is I actually need to kind of get rid of some of this material here But just so happens I have one of these intercooler pipes that's like that and that would be the one on that truck Because when I had put the Mishimoto intercooler in the 12 I had cut these down so that I would have space because you don't you don't want this stuff being metal to metal It just that is no good. You want to have that rubber in there or silicone whatever the boots are made of as an insulator so as the motors torquing this way and where the frames moving you know or yeah so as the motors torquing this way you know you, you get some movement and you're not binding these metal components up i mean there's a reason there's a gap there so what i'll do tomorrow because it's getting late again and i'm frustrated again so it's not that this is hard at all the problem is I'm kind of mix matching different parts. If I would have just bought everything from source and it was a stock truck, I was taking the stock shit off, it probably would have been just peachy. But I didn't do that. We're kind of piecing shit together. We got different aftermarket stuff. So we're having some growing pains, if you will. So uh, tomorrow we'll pull that pipe off that truck and uh, put it in here and go from there. I know this is stupid. I know it's silly. We said, how's the noise? I love the noise. I'm all about the noise. So how is it? He says, oh, this charger will be a screamer. So uh, hopefully it lives up to my expectations of being loud.